You know, Mother Nature comes with a fury, and she did today. The storms came fast, and their impact furious, flooding out the front range. I've never seen a downpour like this before. But there was still fun to be had. Business in Old Town Arvada is back, and they're ready to show just how strong the community is. The whole community, the staff, we really want to give back and show them how much we feel for them at this moment. Plus, a Colorado veteran is making sure his neighbors let their pride for our country fly this holiday weekend. People do fly the flag on special occasions, and that way if they have a flag available, they tend to do it. Our Denver 7 Weather Action Day is coming to an end after a busy day across the Front Range. There was so much rain in Greeley today. Well, look, a new lake was created for the kids to enjoy there in town. And in Arvada, the kids made the most of the flooding with a little help from Mom and her SUV. And if those videos didn't wow. make the storms worth it, this definitely will. Once the sun came out, a rainbow followed, perfectly wrapping around downtown Denver. Good Thursday evening to you, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ann Trujillo. And I'm Shannon Ogden. We're glad you're with us, and we're going to start with meteorologist Stacy Donaldson, who's been tracking these storms all day long. Stacy, they're still having the impact on uh, southern Colorado. Absolutely. Our flash flood watch was lifted a couple of hours ago here for the Front Range, but it still stands into southern Colorado, and we still have flooding rains throughout this area with a flash flood warning near Pueblo. And you see just how heavy these storms are, and they stretch all the way up into northeastern Colorado, so we're looking much improved here. Here for the Denver area, but farther to the south, we still have flash flood warnings in effect even until after midnight here from Pueblo up toward uh, La Junta, and we're keeping a close eye on those storms as they continue to push south and east. So at this point here from Linden to Lyman, we still have some heavy rainfall pushing through and that line stretches up towards Sterling as well. Not much happening here in Denver. We're going to continue to see clearing skies as we head through the rest of our night tonight. 58 will be our overnight low, so that bodes well for our early morning tomorrow before our next set of storms sets up for tomorrow afternoon. We'll talk more about that and how much it will affect us as we go into our holiday weekend coming up. All right, Stacy, thank you. And Greeley saw the worst of the storms this afternoon. Heavy rains flooded streets throughout town, even made its way into some buildings. City Center North and downtown Greeley will be closed tomorrow so crews can dry out parts of the buildings. Well, a lot of our city complexes experienced some significant rainfall in a rapid amount of time, and we got anywhere from one to a few inches of rain in some of our buildings. And at the height of today's storms in Greeley, some areas received three to four inches of rain in just an hour. Um, and the main concern is in the burn scar areas created by last season's wildfires. Now, thankfully, we didn't see any mudslides from today's rain, but we do know that threat will remain through the summer. And a school mines professor explains just why these areas are so prone to slides. Because the burn has removed a lot of the dead material, um, and, and change some of the soil properties. The soil no longer has the ability to be sort of the sponge uh, for water when it comes down. So there's more water that runs off and less that will actually infiltrate into the soil. So a smaller rainstorm can cause a bigger reaction. A representative from FEMA tells our Denver 7 digital team Flood risk in burn areas will remain higher until that vegetation is restored. You can hear more from her right now on the DenverChannel.com. We also have a geologist weighing in for you. and You can take a, take a deeper look at the science right now online. Restaurants in Old Town, Arvada want you to know they are open for business. It has been an emotional week and a half for that community after a deadly shooting in Old Town killed an officer in Good Samaritan. But businesses are doing what they know best, and the community is coming out to show their support. Here is Denver 7 Sloan Dickey. Healing comes in many forms. Through music and flowers and spending time together as a community. It's very important right now with what's going on and I mean it's we should be out here supporting the officer that was lost. Fallen Heroes Officer Gordon Beasley and civilian Johnny Hurley mourned and remembered on Thursday for their brave actions during the deadly shooting in Old Town Arvada in June. It's a strong community. And the businesses are very strong also, and very supportive of each other. Arvada businesses like the Bluegrass Lounge fostering that support as well. I think the whole community uh, is shaken, the staff is shaken. The restaurant hosting a fundraiser for the families of the victims of the shooting in the heart of their community. I think the best way for all of us to come together and heal is by making uh, these victims' families um, as much money as possible. After unspeakable violence. Can't live in fear these days. The community in its many forms. We just have to move forward, get together. Helping people 
heal. I think we're going to grow and get stronger. Sloan Dickey, Denver 7. And several restaurants were part of the Thursday Night Bites event, and money raised from the event will go to the Colorado Fallen Hero Fund, a GoFundMe page set up for Johnny Hurley and the Jefferson Center for Mental Health. All new tonight at 10, Boulder County deputies believe they have found the body of 27-year-old Josh Hall. He went missing while hiking near the Hesse Trailhead in Boulder County in February. A volunteer with a rescue group found remains about four miles from the trailhead, so they have been sent to the coroner's office for confirmation. Tomorrow morning, the half-brother of Dylan Redwine will testify in the trial of Mark Redwine. Mark Redwine on trial accused of killing his 13 year old son Dylan in November of 2012. Today, a forensic anthropologist took the stand. Diane France testified that two marks on Dylan's skull were likely caused by a knife or a sharp tool at the time of his death. She said animals likely caused multiple scars, but not a large fracture above Dylan's eye. The defense attorney suggests though Dylan was killed by a wild animal after he left home. Your child won't have to wear a mask when they return to school in the fall. The State Department of Health made changes to the order just today. And now the only places where unvaccinated people need to wear masks are in jails, homeless shelters and hospitals. Also today, the city and county of Denver lifted mask requirements for kids younger than 11 in any public place in the city. But the U.S. Surgeon General is sending a clear message tonight. This pandemic's not over. And with the Delta variant picking up steam across the country, doctors are urging parents protect your children. I would say right now, if your kids are old enough to wear masks, then they should when they're indoors, um, at least until we can get our arms around this Delta variant. Now, the CDC has not updated guidance in regards to this variant yet. It still says fully vaccinated people do not need to wear a mask indoors or outdoors. And Colorado is still on pace to hit the president's goal of vaccinating 70% of adults with at least one shot of the vaccine by the 4th of July. So right now, tonight, 69.85% of Coloradans have gotten at least one dose. And as we head into the 4th of July weekend, veterans at a senior care facility are keeping a unique tradition alive of honoring those who served. Denver 7's Gary Broad has their story out of Estes Park. As the rain stops in Estes Park, Don Seidel lets his pride for his country fly. It's nice to see him. I've always been a, a flag waver and thought it's nice to respect the flags. A few years ago, the 21-year Army veteran took on the responsibility of making sure all 100 neighbors inside his retirement community has them as well. I just said I would pay for them. <laughs> so, it's a lot to pay for. Well, it turned out to be more than I thought. I might not have volunteered that. But. It might have been a pricier task than the 81-year-old thought, but seeing that flag hang, especially this weekend, gives him satisfaction. People do fly, fly the flag on special occasions, and that way if they have a flag available, they tend to do it. The love for his country is shared with Jim Rushing, a 20-year master sergeant in the Air Force and now an employee at Good Samaritan. Whenever I walk through, and I walk through her quite often, I get a, a, a deep feeling in my heart. Rushing created this hall for veterans inside the retirement facility. It started small with these flags. I, I feel you know, honored to be able to have the flags here and it's each services. This walkway has now become a growing salute to current and past residents. Look at this corner right here at Bob's uh, Brunson's uh, stuff and at his flight helmets. He, that's the actual helmets he wore in World War II. A simple gesture for his brothers and sisters in arms, one that never goes unnoticed by those it was meant for. He did a great job in there and it's nice and every time you walk down that hall you get a little twinge because it's a reminder of everybody's service. In Estes Park, I'm Gary Broad for Denver 7. If you are wanting to show off your patriotism with fireworks this week and make sure you are doing so safely and legally, here's a quick glance at some city rules in Castle Rock. Any firework purchased at local stands within city limits is legal. Same in Aurora. You can use fireworks that don't leave the ground, but in Denver, if you have to light it, it's illegal. Any firework use is illegal in Arvada, Boulder and Fort Collins, just to name a few. And across the state, nothing that leaves the ground is allowed, including bottle rockets and Roman candles. And if you are caught using any of these illegal fireworks, you can face thousands of dollars in fines or even jail time. And by the way, don't call 911 to report illegal fireworks usage. Some cities have designated hotlines for reporting purposes, so be sure and check with your local city for details. Also, 
head over to thedenverchannel.com. We have a complete list of events where you can safely watch a fireworks show this year. Well, the state has chosen the outside attorneys who will investigate allegations that the health department overlooked pollution concerns while issuing permits for coal mines and asphalt plants. They come from a national firm. Now, the claims were brought forward by a whistleblower just back in March. The health department insists it takes clean air standards seriously. Our weather action day slowly coming to an end, but we still have flooding rains affecting parts of Colorado. Flashlight watch in effect until midnight. Coloradans are doing what they can to prevent a repeat of last year's fire season. Unfortunately, we're seeing that more and more fires getting bigger, more common, more frequent. And mitigation efforts require a lot of resources. We need tools, we need trucks. Now, thanks to your generosity, protecting our state is getting a little easier. 